morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, Nigeria. Well, you're very welcome. This is Hello Nigeria here on Wazovia Max, and we are definitely ready to go. My name is Aya Thompson, and it's a special Friday edition as we have a very, very full package for you this afternoon. Not a single dull moment. That's our promise to you. All right, on trending story, some serious news right there. As the governor of Lagos State, Akimumi Ambode, has vowed that he would stamp out Bado cult in Ikorodu and its environs. He said they are not spirits and so they'll be fished out and be done away with even during his tenure. Also, we'll be having some special guests with us this afternoon. Don't forget on Friday, we try to kick things on a light note and bring some entertainment, something fun, something exciting. And definitely, the Eversion crew are evading, <laughs> invading our studio this afternoon. And we'll be having Dabumsha, who's going to be here, and also Okenwa. They'll be speaking to us about something exciting, something you can do, something that you definitely should look forward to coming very, very soon here in Lagos. Yes, we keep you updated on what's fun, what you can do over the weekend, and this is Hello Nigeria special Friday edition. Thank God it's Friday. Like Ayo said, we have a bumper package for you, and yes, uh, today's Friday, we let our hair down. We have a celebrity uh, coming to the studio. His name is Donny. He's a philanthropist. He does so much through his music and, of course, his foundation and his acts for the downtrodden in society. Always good to remember them, uh, that they are part of society also. And our station was Obia Max TV, partnered with German television Deutsche Welle, uh, to crown the Environmental Blogger of the Year. The winner would spend a year in Germany on internship. We'll keep you up to speed with that and show you uh, how things went down. And also we have sports today's Friday with Namdi Ekuba. So stay tuned, relax and have prepare yourself for a great show. I'm Benga Borowa. Hello, Nigeria. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we have told you what to expect of today's show, you're not going anywhere because we'll be right back after this break and then we will start off on a very high note. This is Hello Nigeria one more time. Stay tuned. Etesent Nigeria, that means hello Nigeria in tree. Hi, my name is Amanda Potelwa. I'm from South Africa. Hello, my name is Mimi Akin Kube. Hello, my name is Candace Nkot Gisek. I'm from Cameroon. My name is Idori Nanang. My name is Ifwa Ose. And the most interesting thing I found about Nigeria is the extraordinary hustling energy. And make sure you keep watching. Hello Nigeria. We do it all for you. We do it all for you. Hello there and welcome back. This is Hello Nigeria. Aya Thompson, Benga Bora holding the fort today as Oliver Modi is somewhere lounging and enjoying her time away. Very well deserved break, we must say. So Benga, what's your ideal location for your holiday? The Talks and Caicos Island. <laughs> you always or the British Virgin <laughs> Islands. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sea junkie. I'm attracted to coastal cities. And very fortunately, I've, Can you most afford? of my life I've lived... Can you afford taking a holiday? That's why I'm working moment? hard. That's why I told my producer that let's work on Saturdays and Sunday so I can make that money so I could be able to buy a bitch from property. All right, wonderful. Now, one of the things you have to consider when you're going on holiday is, of course, the flight ticket, transport fare. Mm -hmm. Now, some people cannot afford the holiday and cannot even afford transport fare to their local destination. To get from point A to point B. Point B, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I, saw, I saw a joke once on, on social media that... If you check your accounts today, mm. where is the place? Where, where can you travel to? Oh, yes, based with, on your, with your balance, Some account balance. I can travel to Balinde <laughs> with so the account balance. To the front of my house. To the front of my house. Well, some people, um, there's something that also happens on the streets of Lagos and perhaps in other states in Nigeria where you're on the road. And some people, yes, I even saw well that. Well dressed. Guys. Yes, and it's a executive. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I just don't say I don't have any money. I've lo 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 and some of them are scammers, unfortunately, mm. while some actually have true stories. Well, a comedian thought it would be a good idea to scam the scammer and talk to and relate with one of those street scammers. Here is the video to hopefully entertain you. Good evening. 
My name is Moses. I am going to get your boat. Fortunately, I don't have transport money. I misplaced my transport money. That's what I want transport money for you. You are going to get her. And you are here. Do you know where you are? Please show me. I am going to get her. See, see, look at that bit. Look at that. Look at that bit. That's time was there. That's Anthony. When you just reach that Anthony, you just you see one color there. Before you know you are in the mainland. And just just a like a screw. I cannot trick. Not to go together. I to go together. Let's go. You want to trick? That's what I do. So that see me. I go together. I come back. Like sometimes I do two or three days. I go come, go come, go come. Like two times. Go to get that just just that just here. Bros, see this 20 naira. You can buy pure water for yourself. You are sure you don't have to go to this. Go, go. Get that just here. Go, don't worry. Right? Thank you for the money. Alright. This is not go yet. Go to get that. Talk wow. about scamming the scammer. Yeah, very hilarious video there. Yes. <laughs> Benga, what's the most, I, I would like to say ridiculous, but the most far-fetched story you've heard on the streets? It might be true, and it might not be true. Most times it turns out not to be true, because I have people uh, saying that they went through the same experience with the same guy, the same, oh, my daughter is in hospital and all of that, and bogus, and then you see him somewhere else. And then some well-dressed guys. You know, the, the trick is this. Don't say you don't have any money. Say you just need something to complete your money. Trust me, it works. If your transfer money is 100... people? <laughs> if your transfer money is 100 naira, just say, I just need 50 naira to complete my, Actually, my journey. Actually, that's more. Yeah, because yeah. people like to help you at some point rather than helping yeah. you from scratch. That's a good yeah. idea. Do not do this at home if you're a scammer, except you're in real need or something. I would trek. Now, I would look for help. I would Let find me say, have you ever been stranded? Let me think about it. Have I been stranded? Mm -hmm. Like genuinely stranded? No, the stranded, I was stranded, was hunger stranded. <laughs> and I needed to use the internet. So I was in Addis Ababa, Nigeria. Like our cards didn't work, international cards. I didn't have any cash on me. So, and I had to wait for about four hours. I was hungry. I kept trying, trying, trying. I couldn't withdraw any money. So I was stranded, but I didn't ask anyone for food. What would you do in that sort of situation? Yeah, I'll beg you. I can't no even can lie. <laughs> Are you for real? Huh? I will so beg you style. If you look at me, do I look like someone I used to okay, beg? If yes. I beg you, you give me the money. <laughs> I'm like, but I'm so, you know, this has never happened to me. And I think I'll cry. I need to tears. contact <laughs> my family. <laughs> All right, have you been in a difficult position? Have you been stranded before? I think every human being at one point or the other must have been stranded. What was the experience like? We hope that the video we showed you took you down memory lane, memory lane. I hope it was pleasant, because some people, they are like, I never want to remember that day in my life. But if but it's yes, not going God, to hurt again. you, I mean, just help. And yeah. even if they're scammers, leave it to God. Yeah, I was going to say that we, it saps it's us better, of our humanity. It's better to help and yeah. hope for on the side of Well, not yeah. on the side of caution, but it's better to do it. Yeah, there's one or two people If it's not going you. to affect you, yeah. seriously. Yeah. All right, that's our good deed of the day tip. Help someone today who is stranded. We'll go on a quick break right now. When we come back, we'll be looking at some top stories this afternoon in Trending Stories. Don't forget, today we have Eversion and also Dunny superstars here on the show. So stay tuned. You're most welcome back, and it's time for us to look at some top stories in Nigeria. Today, according to what we spoke about earlier on, the governor of Lagos State, His Excellency Akimumi Ambode, has vowed to stamp out Bado, saying that they are not spirit. Now, he said this yesterday and assured residents that his administration would curtail the activities of the notorious group known as Bado in the Ikorodu axis of the state. Ambode, who gave the assurance while commissioning a rehabilitated Fire service station in Ekbe axis of the state also promised to ensure the safe return of the kidnapped students. That's true, Benga. We're not talking about the oh, kidnapped yes. students it's, it's as much. Oh, yes. It's more than 40 days now. Yeah. And um, every 
day that passes by without the return of those kids to your parents. I, I can imagine the heart-wrenching uh, psychological effects you'll be having mm. on the family and also on the kids. It's good the governor mentioned it, that look, they're in our thoughts and we're doing our best to rescue them. Having said that, residents of Ikorodu have been echoing, a lot of them have been saying, look, the police is picking up innocent people that they know who the real Bado people are. And then the police is responding and say, okay, you know who the real Bado people are, produce them. And in the midst of all of this, we're hearing stories of innocent people being lynched and yeah. burnt. So very it's just, sad. it's a very sad situation every way you look at it. But I'm happy it's gotten to the highest office of the state. The yes. chief executive, chief security officer of Lagos State, uh, the governor, Akumi Ambodian, is on top of the situation. Let's hope uh, we deal with the serial killings because mm. it's taken. Uh, another dimension. Mm. Now, something he also said, Benga, that is worthy of note, is that he challenged all KBACs and all, in fact, here, here's what he said. So I challenge all our KBACs and all our traditional rulers and ballers, we must arrest the situation and as quickly as possible and show that traditional value that we have always been known for and then we will continue to support you. What do you take, what, what's your take on this? Because remember, they say that these Bado cults are ritualists. Yes. They offer sacrifices. And we know that for some, in some traditional um, practices, it involves some form of rituals. And yeah. again, the ballers, the traditional yeah, the community, are the custodians of, of culture of. and also the local leaders. I remember we said once that if they're going to arrest certain things, we need to start to involve exactly, the community because leaders. Because they know you know who your neighbor is. Yes. They, are, they know their environment. And it's good that they're involving them. They're stakeholders in this. Yes. And uh, it would be nice to see them. Uh, being proactive and let's really see the impact of our exactly. traditional institutions. The ballers are the ones, honestly, the ba we, we actually don't understand how much power the ballers mm. wield in their local communities. The ballers are like, obviously, as the name, a baller of a, it's yeah, a like, smaller unit. But like they, the mayors of Yes, the, um, of a small, so a group of families and then the ballers are governed by the local mm. chiefs or kings. So it's important that these, because they know themselves, the truth is that they know themselves and, and they, they understand no the spirits. language of the people. Yeah. Exactly. They know how to talk to the people, how to threaten the people, how to command fear, you know, good fear for them to mm. release the names of these Bado members. So we need to, and I'm glad that the governor has recognized this and is doing this, working with the ballets and calling them out to ensure that this menace is, we see an end to this menace in society. Okay, and moving on to our next story, one who is not very far from controversy. Jonathan's wife petitions members of the House of Representatives alleges harassment by EFCC and NDLEA. Former President Goodluck Jonathan's wife, Patience Jonathan, has petitioned the House of Representatives seeking protection against alleged relentless harassment by agents of the federal government, particularly the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Mrs. Jonathan also listed the National Drugs Law Enforcement Agency, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, amongst agencies of government that were allegedly harassing her. She alleged that the agencies had continued to attack her and her offices since her husband left office in May 2015. Mrs. Jonathan's petition was laid before the House in Abuja on Thursday by a lawmaker from River State, Mr. Gogo Bright Tamano, on behalf of lawyers Granville Abibo. Mm. Now, she's also alleged that they tried to intimidate her and harass her by going to raid periodically some of the properties linked to her. She also mentioned that since um, between February and April, of this year, there were assassination attempts on her life twice um, by EFCC agents. Now, the big question, being would be, let's look at the assassination attempt. How did she know that there were um, EFCC exactly. agents? Exactly. She's alleged so many things here. And um, why her? Does she, is she clean? I mean, are you going to stop the Federal Inland Revenue Service if they feel your businesses are not paying tax? Are you going to say, because I'm a former First Lady, I should be free from, uh, I should be above the law, or I should be an untouchable. Uh, there's a case worth about five million, in total about seven million dollars was found in her account. And she went to court uh, to counter suit to unfreeze uh, account. And you're wondering, this is somebody that has been a civil servant, no, no known business uh, for the rest, for most of her life. How do you come about this money? She said there were gifts, and I find it 
very ridiculous. Every, that, every, people uh, are so generous with people, their gifts. Yeah, how come I don't have $7 million? Maybe because I'm not a former first lady. Yeah. But having said that, I think this is abuse of position. Mm. Why do you run to the House of Representatives? Is the House of Representatives above the law? And why don't you just listen to them and cooperate with law, yeah. law enforcement? Anybody can be questioned. You're yeah. not above the law. There are ordinary Nigerians, that have Okada riders, tricycle riders that are harassed in, in a cartoon every day by security agents uh, demanding stop 100 and stop and search, 100 naira on a daily basis. They're just trying to get by. They don't go to the National Assembly to complain or, or cry uh, or be cry babies. Mm -hmm. So she should man up or woman up and uh, face the law. I think very well said. I love the fact that you brought out you know, the plight of the ordinary Nigerian who face intimidation and harassment by all manner of people. They have touts, the mm. local landowners, who would harass you to pay money for parking on free space. Exactly. And then still break into your car. <laughs> they have harassment from law enforcement agents who are on the streets and stuff. Anything for the boys. This one is indirect harassment because they're not I, asking you to do it. But, and so I if also you like to say, look, that, justice should be holistic. If yeah. you feel you have a case against this person, and there's petitions against former heads of states and first ladies. Deal with everything. A lot of them are still very much alive. Like, justice should be It shouldn't holistic. be, on, it shouldn't on, be just for one focused person. on one person. But saying that, after saying that, I also like to say that it's important that the agencies, EFCC and FIRS, are not abusing their power. Because we do understand the position of when you're trying to get back at your predecessor. So, yes, we're saying that, yes, yeah, she should, a woman, yeah, but we should also no ensure that they're also carrying out within the remit, exactly. remit of their powers. Because in respect to the law, whether the law is now favoring her or not, the law must take its due course. So, if they're indeed doing it as a tool of intimidation and harassment, then it needs to be looked into. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's all we have for you today on Trending Stories. It's been, you know, really good having these discussions. But yeah, we do this every single weekday from Monday to Friday here on Hello Nigeria. We trash out issues around Nigeria making headlines. Right now, we're going to quick break. And when we come back, we'll be showing you the video of DW as a partner with Nigeria promoting the environment and an opportunity for one very blessed Nigerian to have an, you know, year abroad to get, gain even more experience. DW video after this break. But why did this guy decide to do this? We look, say, uh, it don't turn time. We will say Nigerian youth will start to talk about environment. So we can't say, okay, what will be the real thing? We talk, say, now bloggers be the best way to connect for the environmental issue. So now what will we do? Yes, I believe, say, blogging don't they grow, and uh, we still get more things to do, make, 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 make we grow better. Yeah. It's hard to, to cage people when they for, for the social media from blogging because it's an open space. You know, everybody gets um, his own idea, gets his own um, uh, project and all of that. But I think with time, if governments and, and those who control the, the space can put in parameters or um, laws, where we say people, before you get licensed or before you are able to blog, you have to pass certain exams in terms of certain um, steps, you know, that would be fine, but as I said, it's very difficult to do that. But as we continue from time to time, I'm sure people will begin to learn to say it's good to tell the truth and tell verified stories rather than telling stories where be false. And specific websites for sports, specific websites for politics, and all this other stuff. And then the one that I started with that used to get out to everybody is going to change to just my personal business. Just me. People should, I feel I should get maybe like 2,000 or 3,000 views in a week. I realize that I get about 400, 500 views. So I'm still trying to, I, I think I need to go, go and get some classes from a bunch of I'm still trying to understand how these people think because they are, like my serious videos, I have 15,000, 16,000 views. Bloggers should try to go to school and learn more about 
passing information and passing out things, not just to write and compose and just feel they can do anything. Look at Ali Oluwafi. From the blog Rookie Space, Blakey Ajima's sustainable approach to environmental preservation. to be prepared you have to develop mechanisms to not to fall into the trap of fake news that can be so dangerous and our first prize in the category video goes to oh, to Benson Doton for the Brock Fasania Center for Earthworks with the video World War Today <laughs> Nigeria. That means hello Nigeria in tree. Hi, my name is Amanda Potelwa. I'm from South Africa. Hello, my name is Mimi Akinkube. Hello, my name is Candace Nkotgisek. I'm from Cameroon. My name is Ido Enanang. My name is Efua Ose. And the most interesting thing I found about Nigeria is the extraordinary hustling energy. And make sure you keep watching. Hello Nigeria. We do it all for you. We do it all for you. You are most welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that video and it's really, really inspiring to see partnerships like this with Nigerian institutions like Wazoia Max. All right, our guests for this afternoon are two young men who are doing fantastic things. We hope that you'll be entertained by the few minutes that we have with them. Our first guest is a TV show host, OAP performing artist, spoken word poet, writer, as well as an entertainment lawyer. His literally and musical works, collectively known as the Boomsha Creatives, include the Mavix EP, Rebel Music Mixtape Volume 1 and 2, as well as the Boomsha series. His stories and songs deal with contemporary issues and influence public opinion, especially within members of the urban Christian community. He's also the creative director at Boomsha Creative, a consulting firm for creatives. I'll let you know his name in a moment, because I would like to also talk about our second guest as well, who's here. They're here together. Now, our guest is a creative writer, also poet, spoken word artist, body and graphics designer, intending user interface and user experience designer and dancer amongst many other things. He is Okenwa. Okenwa and Dabumsha are yes. here with us on the show. Nice to have you guys. Thank you so much talent. I mean, yes. we can go on and on about all the Amazing. skills they have. And I'm sure they didn't list everything now. I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> They're just there And ETC, ETC. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so many others. Mm -hmm. Nice yeah. to have you guys here. Thank yeah. you so Thank much you for having me. Great to have you on the show this mm -hmm. afternoon. Mm -hmm. Now, Dabumsha, you're a man of many talents, but which would you say if you were to self-define as one thing, what would it be, the number one thing? Um, I'm a media personality. Okay. That, that basically sums up every other thing. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. So a multimedia personality. Exactly. You can say that. <laughs> you can say so that. how did you get into this in the first place? Uh, I think... Uh, have I, you always had a... Or, mm. it's when, like, or it happened after the advent of the internet? Uh, Yes, before before we had the internet, right from childhood, I had always been fascinated with the media. You know, I I always knew that the media would always be a powerful tool for reaching out and influencing society. Mm -hmm. So even right from the get go, when I was still in secondary school, you know, would leave home, go for radio interviews back then in Kaduna. You know, then we're still budding rappers and all that, yeah. and I would look at the mask, you know, a broadcasting yeah. mask, and I'll say, wow, this thing is powerful. It can reach millions. 
you know, so you right from that, yeah. right from I told myself I would always be a part of the media, do stuff, you know, get Wonderful. content out. Yeah. Great. Okay, well, you are in, an, in some form of media as well. So yep. you're both media personalities. So yep. tell us about your form of media. Okay, so um, if I would pick one thing like you asked, yeah. it would be that, uh, first of all, a writer, then a spoken word artist. Yeah. Oh, a writer. Word artist. What, what, what do you like to write about? I, I write poems you know, about experiences that um, I've gone through and any other thing that uh, affects society. So uh, I think that that's it. I even have a book, though. You have a, a book? A book, a book yes, of yes, poems? Right. Yeah. You know, people don't actually associate men and poems and poetry. They think it's women. You know, when you hear mm. of poetry, a book of poetry, you're thinking, you know... Oh, they think uh, it's all romance. Yeah, yeah, romance, hearty, emotional stuff. So do you get this and is... Poetry mainly meant for women. No, it's not like no big no. Uh, it's 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 meant for everybody. It's it's a tool of expression. It's Where a do platform your to ideas it. come from? You say experience. You're quite a young man, and uh, uh, you uh, what you say, how many experiences <laughs> do you have Ooh, I guess, to write well, about? Well, that you don't have kids, you've not been married, mm. you haven't seen life, mm -hmm. uh, and all of that. So where do, you, where do your creative juices come from? Okay, so I, I think it comes from within, uh, whatever within is. I, mm. I think that um, from childhood I could still remember some things, you know, up to um, my teenage years, then university days, and your then now that I'm working. Yeah. So it's more like environment, the things that I've gone through in that moment. So as I grow, the experience increases. So I write more experiences. So I might not have more Great. now, but I have what enough experience as at where I am today. Nice. So, All right, wonderful. I mean, it's great. How, how about you? you know, Dabumcha, me, before you answer that yeah. question, where did the name Dabumsha? Tell us the history mm -hmm. of that name, please. Um, Dabumsha is... Uh, Symbolic for it's like an onomatopoeia, you know. Yeah. Mm. It's it's a name that, that suggests the sound. The sound, you know, yeah. the boom shot is like the sound of water gushing forth from a rock, okay. you know, like awesome. what Moses did back in the wilderness. Yeah. So for me, the boom shot symbolizes rebirth. You know, I used to be known as Rhapsody, you know, and after a while, you know, some soul searching, I decided uh, to do a whole rebranding, and I was like, this is the birth of something new, mm -hmm. and this something new is more explosive than upgrade mm -hmm. on the original. You know, yeah. that, that's how the boom shot came about. So, so when people hear you, they just boom shot. Exactly. Yeah. And because and it's, it's, very, it's very memorable. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's hip hop. You know, back in the days, the boom shot kalaka, you know, yeah. Yeah. and all that. That's how it came. Now, back to the question. The thing is, women love poetry, mm -hmm. but women do not necessarily like to recite poetry. Mm -hmm. They like poetry being recited to them by men. Who said so? Mm. Yes. 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 <laughs> and, like, 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 yes. Good point, good point. Like. Exactly. And again, I think when it comes to poetry, the name that readily comes to mind is Shakespeare, and he's a man. So it is, mm. that yeah. stereotype does not necessarily apply. Mm. Yes, men recite poetry. It is true that in typical African setting, it's, it's not yeah, something... Yeah, it's not very yeah. manly. Exactly. And rap yeah. you know? music is a yeah. form of... Poetry is just exactly. that it's faster. Exactly. Yeah. Do you so, agree? Some people will disagree with that though. They say mm. rap is not poetry. No, it's, a, it's an insult to poetry to compare rap to poetry. No. What's oh, your come on. That's nah, nah, nah. Yeah. No. I mean, rap is simply poetry set to music. Ooh. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So what's That's the difference? Now, let's differentiate rap music, poetry, and spoken word. Mm. Mm. Here's the way I like to define yeah. it. Okay. Poetry can be recited, you know. You, you, you pick a book, you, you wrote a poem, you recite it. Yeah. But performance poetry, which is spoken word poetry, is performed. It's not just about reading. reading. reading it's about yeah. presenting it, dramatizing believing it, it. Yeah. dramatizing exactly. it. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a total package. And then rap is the music element added to performance poetry. Mm. So it's like from one process, to the other. So but which is the most really. powerful tool? Oh, uh, come on, let's uh, not do that. I'll say spoken word. Okay, why do you spoken think word. spoken word is spoken word? Yeah, yeah. You say spoken word. Yeah. And uh, we're Nigeria, are we receptive to it? Where you have people yeah. that have lyrics, musicians mm. that talk about banana falling on you, <laughs> of chukin you chuku chuku, yeah. and then the youths. I mean, these are their idols. They look yeah. up to them. Yeah. And you think spoken word in this same, are you talking of Nigeria or England? <laughs> that Nigeria. Like that, are, are they receptive to spoken word? Yes, uh, okay, so. Or you oh, have a community of people that appreciate it and, yeah. Okay. People are receptive and I also have uh, a community of spoken word artists around me. So um, 
I know that spoken word will become if it's if it's not already becoming it right now. But it takes become a level of music intellect is, to appreciate it. Spoken word is becoming it. sorry. You said I said, I said it, what music is right now. Oh, spoken okay. word is, oh, okay. is is very not very close, but but like, it doesn't it appeal would, to the masses. So. Now, um, um, uh, it, it if does. I may, Maybe say, I'm, I may I'm, come I'm in here, sell no, yourself. It does. If it I does. may come in here, here's the way I see it. Poetry is for thinkers. Mm. The average man thinks. Mm -hmm. Thinks. Mm. It's just that sometimes when he thinks and he gets frustrated, yeah. he looks for escape. It's now, right. that's where that's all it. the junk music comes in. But yeah, intrinsically, man thinks. Yeah. So the idea is, how do you communicate to him these thoughts? in a language he can understand. That is why we have poet, poets who perform in pidgin English. Mm. Yeah. If the masses, as we you do, call them... I'd love to hear oh, that. Oh, wonderful. Ah, there are people. Wonderful. There are there are people. great people who do yeah. that. Now, if the average man gets to hear this on a daily, he hears a pidgin spoken word poem in a bus, he thinks. True. Yeah. This guy knows. He so would. the issue is, is, are we getting the stuff to the people? Yeah. Or yeah. are we drowning yeah. them with the other stuff? Yeah. I think that, to an extent, we underestimate Nigerians. We think the average Nigerian is not intelligent, does not want intelligent music. But the True. truth is, it the is whatever you feed And they're telling with. them to spell things like, um, just ordinary things, and then they bungle it up. So you feel the level of intelligence of the average school. You look at the level of education too. Yeah, but well, even the do, it, it, will be good, yeah. it will be big disservice to assume that... The majority be, yeah, of that Nigerians, Nigerians are not. Nigerians are yeah. Now, you think I mentioned something about a community of poets and spoken word, and I know that there's a big... I didn't know about this until the first time I encountered Rhyme and Reason. Okay. That there's a community, or there are a community of people or of Nigerians who appreciate spoken word and Very, rap music. And yep. Tell us about this yeah. community. I was being it's a cult following, yeah. and exactly. it's like it's like a religion. They know, you know, they know themselves. They, know ourselves, yeah. they talk in the same language. Language. So when they're speaking, I can almost. And I was fascinated because it was my first time, you know, yeah. encountering that. So tell us about this community and how rhyme and reason brings them together. Ooh, okay, so uh, rhyme and reason, first of all, is it is a platform for, I mean, poetry and any form of art, rap, spoken word in front, then rap behind, then every other <laughs> art. Okay, so uh, I think the, the community, I've, I don't know where it all started. For me, I, I think I started taking spoken word seriously last year. Then I, I, I think I prayed somewhere in my mind that I wanted to see people around me that were interested in this thing. And interestingly, people had interest, like, from when they were young, they were writing, you know, and all of a sudden, some people said, okay, I could perform this thing. At first, it was looking like, oh, why is this guy trying to rap without music? But, but now, it's, it's very receptive. I mean, spoken word is the only art where, when it's being performed, there is almost pin drop silence in the environment, like, or in the hall, so, because you need to hear yeah, what they're saying. So, um, I think the community has always been there. It's just that, we were coming together, so it's going to be heard. There is no how um, people won't hear about. So uh, the people. future is bright. So it yeah. is too bright. The community <laughs> will keep building. I mean, someone just started spoken word last week. I mean, they are there. They are growing. I mean, mm. even from my post on Instagram, there are people that have said, "Okay, I'm going to take this thing serious." Seriously. Even from now. All right, so wonderful. Now, rhyme and reason is in its third season. You have your version coming up. Yeah, next this is week. The third one. And uh, Boomsha, you're going to be performing. Yes. Is this your first time performing on that platform? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yes, so, what should people expect from mm. you? Yeah, now here's the thing <laughs> for this year, Evasion is mind blowing. It's, it's oh, a novel oh. experience altogether. The most um, similar you know, experience we've had to that is Hamilton, which is an experience not. The average Ham Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton. No, Hamilton, no, the Hamilton. Hamilton, the yeah. musical. Oh, exactly. Yeah. In America. Exactly. Oh, I did. Yes. I was, I yes. I this time, here's what mm. we're doing. We're marrying spoken word poetry, rap, music, theater, drama, on all stage. together drama on stage. Wow. So That's it is mind blowing. That's never been done in Nigeria. It, it's before. never yeah. been done never. before. Mm -hmm. It's audacious, it's bold, you know, but. We're, we're, we're almost getting it together. We've been having intense rehearsals, you know. I as so you're rapper, not coming as a as individual performers. No, you're coming no, together. Coming well, together. It's, 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 I would. I can't be. And it's an absolute <laughs> pleasure to have you guys here. Yeah. When is it happening? And venue. 
15th of July. Okay, it's, it's happening on the 15th of July, 2017. That's, That's a Saturday. Saturday. That's a Saturday. Next week, Saturday. A week and a day from today. Okay. <laughs> what time? Um, venue is the Lekki Coliseum, Lekki Phase 1. Okay. What okay. time is it time, happening? Okay, so we have two shows on the same day. Okay. There's the 3 to 5 show, and then there's the 6 to 8. So um, anyone, anybody wants to attend, you can choose. So, so if you what, have a wedding, you can come us? for... You can come for the six to eight one. Okay, so how much it would cost for students? Well, where can people get the information from our yeah. website? Hmm. Okay, so uh, they can get it from rhymeandreasoning.com. Rhymeandreasoning.com. Okay. Um, Into, um, social media handle. Social media handle for Twitter. It is R and R concert. Okay. So it's like letter R and R concert. Then. Um, Instagram is rhyme and reason underscore ng. All right. Yeah, so um, if you follow us on all these channels, you know details of So everything. all the details, what well, people are Every counting thing. down. Everything. I would actually love to experience that Broadway featuring Broadway. spoken word poetry yeah. rap. Hey, hey, hey. Together. I get to see the magic and the bombastic uh, of that. You know that <laughs> I really appreciate creatives because they save us a lot of stress. I mean, look at the environment we live in, flawed noise, the economy and all of that. And to have, I mean, Claude Monet would go to the south of France, the tranquil environment to get his head together before he paints. Mm. And this composes something inspires you. But you guys mm. get, despite, <laughs> in spite of the situation in Nigeria, you still have time to be creative. Yeah. I mean, that's... Um, and let, let's not forget to applause. add, we've been helping relationships since inception, since beginning of existence. <laughs> oh, we've been helping men in love <laughs> yeah. express how they feel. So it's know? a great date true, idea true. as well oh. to come. So I definitely come will be there. Yes, yeah. yes, I will as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have had the team, Dabumsha and Okenwa, talking about eversion, rhyme and reason, mm -hmm. coming to you, yes, Broadway right. style, like you've never seen it before never. in Nigeria. Never. I'm really excited about this because that's something new and innovative, particularly from young people comes yeah. out. It's definitely something to celebrate. If you'd like to get information, don't forget they said you can go onto their website, rhymeandreasoning.com, rhyme rhymeandreasoning.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be going to another very brilliant artistic mind as he sings to us this beautiful Friday afternoon. And Kobams Asukwa will leave in his hands, and then when we come back, we'll talk about what's happening today in his stream. Swimming against the current, swimming against the current. I think I need you. I need you. Trying so hard to finish, trying so hard to finish. Strong, but I need you. I need you. I'm trying to make sense of it, trying to make sense of it all, but I can't, and that's the truth. Cause you're all I've ever needed You're all I've ever needed But I don't know the truth Oh You are my star You show me the way The way back to you You are my star My sky blue, you are the light in my dark. Without you, my world would be so empty. Empty, you fill the space in my heart. Please don't leave me feeling so empty. Empty, yeah. yeah. I'm 
swimming against the current, swimming against the current. I think I need you. I need you. I'm trying so hard to finish, trying so hard to finish strong that I need you. I need you. Trying to make sense of it, trying to make sense of it all, but I can't, and that's the truth. Cause you're all I've ever needed, you're all I've ever needed, and I don't know the truth. Oh, you are my star. You show me the way. Way back to you. You are my sun. You brighten my gray and make my sky blue. You are the light in my dark. Without you, my world would be so empty. Empty. You fill the space in my heart. Please don't leave me feeling so empty. Empty. I really need a miracle. I really need a miracle. Tell me, is that you? Is that you? I really need a miracle. I really need a miracle. Tell me, is that you? Oh, I really need a miracle. I really need a miracle. Tell me, is that you? Is that you? Show me the way, the way back to you. You are my son. You brighten my gray and make my sky blue. You are the light in my dark. Without you, my world would be so empty, empty. Please fill the space in my heart. Please don't leave me feeling so empty, so empty. Well, beautiful song there by yeah. Kobams Asuko, the yes, legendary Kobams, Empty. Yes, indeed. And we know that our weekdays feel so empty without you joining us every single day from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Yeah. PM. <laughs> Hello, Nigeria. All right, we'll go straight head on straight to um, today in history. If it's your birthday today, today is a very significant day. It's the 7th of the 7th, 1 7. Wow. Yeah, I do know that. 7 7 7. 7 7 1 7. Seven. Yeah, it's, yeah, one seven. seven, seven, seven but there's still, you know, it has sevens all through. Now, what Manny did, and you can get another of it this evening, was he put 7.07 a.m. So 7.07 a.m. of the 7th of the 7th, one seven. So mm. tonight at 7, 7 p.m., you can do 7.07 p.m., the 7th of the 7th, 17. All right, just a little tip right there. The What's next time this happens will be in another 100 years. Yeah, eight, another 100 years. 2018. It's I hope to still be alive and kick it. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. So today in history um, was the death <clears throat> of um, Chief MKO Abiola CFR. He's often referred to as well Chief Moshud Kashimawo. Olawale Abiola, who was a popular Nigerian Yoruba businessman, publisher, politician, and aristocrat mm. of the Yoruba Egba clan. He's, pop, he's very famous for running for presidency when it's what was said to be then the first and first election. election, 1993, mm. June 12, which was unfortunately annulled by the military head of state at the time, Badamosi Babangida. 
All right. But um, we, we, I mean, we do remember him years and years later mm -hmm. after he's passed away. And even some states in the Southwest mark his, the June 12th, the historic yeah. elections, as Democracy Day. Yes. They celebrate that. Uh, as Democracy Day. Yes, indeed. Now, another thing, another important event in history, in Nigerian history today, is the Civil War. Well, today was, um, is in 50 years when the Civil War took place. Some people have said that it took place between the 6th of July to the 15th of July. Others have said it started today, the 7th of July, mm. and it lasted. And this war is popularly known as the Biafran War. It was a war fought between the government of Nigeria and the secessionist state of Biafra. Now, some things you should know. We thought to, and Benga, it's very important that we're talking about this today it's because very we know that. Because of yeah. the agitation and the calls for restructuring and, yeah. of course, secessionist movements. Yeah. Uh, IPOB and uh, Masob in the southeastern parts of Nigeria. Yes. yes. All right. Okay, so a few um, facts about Biafra, about the Biafran war. Um, it was caused according to... the literal, Little is known about the literal meaning of the word Biafra. It derives from the subgroup Biafra or Biafada of the Tender ethnic group. So many things to learn about. I wish we could talk about this in detail. Yep. But I think tuning in on Monday morning, we'll be looking at it because we're still within the period of mm. um, the war. But yes, we're talking about this in, you know, in more detail. On okay. Monday. And uh, that concludes our show. To enjoy more of these our Ugonge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.